Knife dope. More dope. Come and get your fix. What's up, fuckers? Your boy is back with a fresh batch of dope. Night though. That's right, people. The hits don't stop. Now I've been gone for a little over a week out here in these EDC streets. And we've had a couple of milestones that have uh, passed us by in my absence. One of the most important milestones is going to be this one. 1,800 subscribers has now been surpassed for the channel. So I am extremely grateful to all of y'all who always kick it and hang around. And even more so to those of y'all who uh, mash that subscribe button. But also we had a, uh, a holiday of sorts. A national holiday last Saturday. Last Saturday was National Knife Day. Now what's crazy is I've never, um, never ever remember hearing about National Knife Day until this year. Do not recall if this was something that's been around for a while or if this is something that just kind of started happening. Uh, but regardless, this was the knife I had in my pocket on Saturday. American craftsmanship and overpricing at its finest. This, of course, being the Benchmade Narrows. Now, this knife triggers a ton of y'all out there, and I love every goddamn minute of it. Sure. It's overpriced, underperforming, but God damn it, do I love it. So much so that we might adorn this the, um, the knife of the channel. Let me know in the comments if we should uh, give this girl that title, as it is a prestigious title to hold here at Knife Dope Studios. Now, um, beyond that, I have a couple of new knives with some new finger safe uh, locking mechanisms that we're going to be checking out. And so without further ado... Let's get to the dope. All right. Got to give a, uh, a big shout out and big thank you to today's sponsor, the gentleman responsible for sending me these knives. We're talking about Mr. Marky Mark. Now, you can follow Mark at Daily Knife Nut on Instagram. Go ahead and give my man a follow. Give him a like. He's got a great collection, and he knows how to use that goddamn camera. Okay. First knife we're going to be taking a look at is one that I'm not even going to shit you on. I hated it, hated it, hated it um, prior to getting my hands on it. Let me elaborate a little bit. This is the Aurora Knife and Tool Truffles. Now, the name alone kind of made me want to hate this knife. Um, I feel Truffles is a ridiculous name. Um, but even more so than that, I had a uh, somewhat of a grudge because elephants never forget. And when this knife was in its prototype phase, um, a couple of small channels had reached out to the individual you know, small channels like myself uh, and other channels had actually reached out to Aurora Knife and Tool to see about being able to check out the prototype, and we were denied. Um, at the time, they only wanted bigger channels to experience and to talk about the knife, and that shit kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But all that being said, I'm going to put those feelings to the side and give you an unbiased review on this knife. Now, this was a pre-order at one point, $185. Uh, these are actually OEM by a Chinese OEM by the name of CKO. Never heard of them before uh, Before doing the, um, the deep dive on this knife for this video, but allegedly they've got over 20 years in the game. Um, but back to the knife, a couple of forms of deployment. We've got a front flipper that's got the right amount of jimping that goes up and over that flipper, a traditional flipper tab, as well as a nice hole for the cutout. Let's check it out. Detent is dialed the fuck in. Now, this is utilizing what they call the roundhouse lock. Essentially, it is a liner lock that is actuated by the uh, push of a button, the button being the pivot itself. The reason they call it the roundhouse lock is they've got some sort of a leg, quote-unquote leg, that actually kicks the liner out when you mash the button. So there's a leg up in here that's actually kicking that liner out. Hence the name, uh, the roundhouse lock. Uh, it's actually patented by Frank Shi, who is a uh, known member of the community as well. 
Full size knife coming in at 8.1 inches. Of that, 3.4 is in this Tonto blade. We do have a nicely done compound grind. So we got a hollow here on the belly, flat on the tip. S35 VN is the steel of choice. Nice satin finish on that blade. Uh, titanium scales that appear to have been uh, blasted. Um, now there is a single liner which has got your lock bar and that is here on the show side of the scale. T8s in the pivot on the body and in this filler tab. All hardware as well as um, cover plate or rather filler, filler tab is titanium as well as this mill titanium pocket clip. All forms of deployment are nice and snappy. Uh, however, the way this flipper tab on the back sits kind of high when you go with the front flipper, if you're not paying attention, sometimes I can um, hit my index finger with that flipper tab. Uh, perhaps if you've got a bigger paw on you, that won't be an issue. Uh, but for me, it was 118,000 blade stock thickness, so she will cut nice and slicey. All in all, man, not a bad offering. $185. You can't be mad at it. Um, yeah, I guess... Uh, I guess I can't hate on it anymore, can I? Uh, weight came in at 4.2 ounces, and um, so there's the, uh, the truffles. Now let's go ahead and put some comparisons up to give you a better idea on the size of this thing. Basically, a little bit of knife flexing. You know how the fuck we do. We're gonna keep it all finger safe locking mechanisms for this entire video, and we're gonna roll like this. Gotta come with America first. We're gonna go with the Spyderco Para 3. Now, not just any pair of three, but the award-winning goddamn pair of three. Next up, how about this beauty? More American dope for your palate. We're going to go with the Protec Mordax with that uh, plunge lock for your locking mechanism. So there are those. Let's do two mo. God damn it, two mo. How about, uh, how about this one? Coming from Cold Steel. Utilizing the Atlas lock, and that is going to be the full metal Atlas. And then last for this knife, we're going to come with this one. The Chupacabra, coming from Tactile Knife Co., utilizing the Snack Lock. So there we see the truffles up against those. So I guess uh, in the grand scheme of things, the truffle is not as bad as I thought. Still despise the name. Um, still despise the fact that they did not want to allow smaller channels to check out the prototype. Don't know how well this sold, if they sold out or what have you. I really didn't follow along. But um, big thanks to Mark for sending this in. And that one was the truffles. Okay, now this next one, totally different situation here. This is coming to us from Golden Design Works. And this is the Caliber. Now, I've had my eye on this bitch for a while now. Um, did not take part in the pre-order. This was also a pre-order. I think they started filling the orders on these in June of this year. And then it seemed like they sold out instantly after the fact. So, you know, congratulations to the company. But I feel like if they would have had more, people would have bought more. Uh, but anyways, these were 350. These were actually OEM by Best Tech. Uh, this version is coming in the sky color. And we've got this beautiful knurling pattern there on, the, uh, on both sides of the scales. Uh, slightly contoured at that. Four forms of deployment. Front flipper, traditional flipper, cutout and you can actuate that button. Now what that button is doing is it's actually going ahead and it is attached to a liner, which has got your lock insert attached. So basically it's a plate here, which your lock insert sits on. This, um, this bar is attached to it. And when you mash that button, well, let's deploy the knife first. Okay, when you mash the button, it actually slides that lock bar over, uh, away from the, underneath the tang of the blade, allowing your knife to close. Now back to your deployment options. All of them are nice and snappy. Front flipper, traditional flipper, and your cutout. Uh, the jimping they've got on these flipper tabs is the way to go. Perfect, perfect jimping. Uh, it's kind of like that fine jimping that Riot uses. Uh, this front one goes up and over the front flipper, and then you've got the same thing going on there in the uh, in the traditional flipper. 8.5 ounce, or rather 8.5 inches, is the size of the knife, so a little bit bigger than I like to carry. Uh, but regardless, exquisitely done. 3.75 inches in this nicely done sheep's foot apparatus. Full to full length hollow grind is what I'm going with. Uh, we've got CPM Magna Cum Laude for the steel being ran at 61 to 63 HRC. 
The good news is it has been reported fairly recently that Best Tech has been hitting the mark on their HRC, you know. These Chinese companies, man, they are getting better and better. They are listening to the people. And sometimes uh, you just got to give them credit when credit's due. Uh, ergonomically, you got a nice finger choil, so you can definitely choke up and get that full purchase. No refund. Blade stock thickness, 118 thousandths. I measure 20 thousandths behind the edge. You guessed it, a slicey hoe. Now, we've got a two-tone finish on the blade, so we've got a blasted or rather glass blasted finish there on the uh, on the blade and then in the flats we've got a rub satin finish and then back on the swedge they went back with that glass blast the actual scales have also been glass blasted prior to the anno job and then they left that raw glass blast finish there on the uh, folded over titanium pocket clip love the fact that we got a blind mounted screw for that pocket clip just makes the presentation look so goddamn clean Weight came in at four ounces on this, so perfect weight to size distribution. I like this thing a lot. Uh, my only complaint, to be honest with you, is the size, and that's just for my own, um, my own needs and wants. I would have loved this knife to have been somewhere along the range of 7.2 to 7.6 overall, uh, but do not fret. Word on the street is that Golden Design is going to be coming out with a mini caliber at some point hopefully later this year. So I will be staying tuned for that. Uh, now let's go ahead and put some comparisons up for this one. Let's go with this beauty. This is of course the Brown Knives Mini FSD. Very similar locking mechanism. Um, this has got a button actuated sub frame lock. Um, but yeah, if you know, you know. More American dope, we're gonna come with the Spyderco Manix 2 utilizing that ball bearing lock. So there's the caliper up against those. Let's do two mo. God damn it, two mo. Gotta have some Demco. We're gonna come with the uh, AD-15 by Cold Steel, utilizing that Scorpion lock. And then of course, gotta have this beauty, the AD-20, also from Demco. And so there you see the caliper up against those. You know, as I was prepping for this video, it dawned on me just how many of my knives have got finger safe locks. I mean, pretty much the majority of them for the most part. And it's just uh, also started to dawn on me that that seems to be the way of the future. You know, I think we all love finger safe locks. Companies have started to innovate, uh, you know, case in point, these two knives. They took two traditional locking systems, a liner lock and a frame lock, and then made them finger safe. I dig it. You should too. But more importantly, I want to know what you fuckers think. Which is your favorite finger safe locking mechanism? Tell me all about it. Love you, mean it. Until the next time. Cut something. Cut someone. Just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers.